Hello, hello. This video is going to be a quick one. Well, really, it's actually going to be really long because it's actually the walkthrough of how to use the sales tracker that I created for you new and inspiring solo cleaners that want to become professional. And I understand as you grow your business, you're going to want to track your sales, see how much your profit, kind of work out what your monthly goals are going to be looking like. And as a professional business, as a business owner, you want to make sure that you know your numbers at all times. Because of this comment, I made sure that I revamped my own personal spreadsheet that has helped me for the first few years in my business before I had the income to pay for monthly fees. Those fees could get anywhere from $50 to $150 a month. And this spreadsheet's only $19. So for you starting out, this I could take with you on your desktop and on your phone. And you have support with me in the free Facebook group. So if you have any questions, regarding financials or any other questions to help you grow your business, then you can message me in the Facebook group. And you're gonna notice that I'm speaking to you in the video uh, about this actual video right now. And I really speak about a book that really inspired how I broke down the finances in this spreadsheet so that you are understanding what your profits are, understanding what your actual income, what your expenses, would be how your money is divided so you're confident um, about where your money is going in the for the longevity of your business and that was really inspired by the book profit <laughs> profit first and you can find the link down in the description box if i can find the link but you can find the book anywhere if you just googled it so thank you for so much for those who've already ordered the spreadsheet don't forget to let me know how you love it in the facebook group so i can share it with more people um like you who are enjoy want to enjoy a tool like this so let's get into the training okay this is the first tab of the screen here this is a brief Background story of why this was created. As I started my business, I didn't have the money to spend for $49, $50, almost $100 on client uh, CRM softwares or QuickBooks or Jobbers or anything like that was providing services like this. So I had to just do it manually. And I know that I've been in multiple support groups that spoke, speak on the struggle of keeping other clients together as they grow. So what do you get what, what what products out there that caters to people that just don't have the income right now and but does want do want to um, keep their business organized as they grow so this is what i've created and recently i just revamped this because i wanted to just put this out there publicly so i spent a few weeks um partnering with someone to create this sheet i'm really excited to have it out so i'm going to explain how i use this Excel sheet client and sales tracker to keep everything organized in my business um, before you know looking to more paid platforms as you grow. So this first tab is where you will put your client information. It's up to you if this information um, you want to add on or you want to increase uh, more information here. You just um, right click or if you have a Mac, you know, click on the side here and um in insert a column i don't i don't suggest you insert a column near this client tab especially if you're not really techy because you may m mess up the formula here so if you do want to add and core include a form a uh, column you could go ahead and add that here so this all the information here is all example purposes these are not real clients. Um, this is where you just put your actual clients. This is for just, you know, easy access to have all your client names here. All right. So this is where we get into the big stuff. Uh, I am an avid reader uh, and all business owners should. And from the suggestions of Profit First, if you want to know, if you can't just you go, you can search and you'll find it. But if you cannot find it, just uh, let me know in the Facebook group. Um, you could join the face free Facebook group if you have any further questions or um, anything's not working out for you. That's where you get the information. But according to Profit First, helping small business owners 
take care of their finances, you're going to see where I got all these categories and suggestions from. Okay. So I'm going to quickly just briefly go through what these are and then um, what these numbers mean. So your monthly goal, which consists of your yearly goal, as we, at the time of recording here is November of 2022, we're going to 2023. So you may be using this to finish up the, the few months, but you should always already be looking at what your next year goal is. So that's where you get your monthly goals. Okay, here, if you're brand spanking new, I suggest to start with, you know, 2,500, 3,500, especially if you are part-time, you know, not seeing that um, ability to expand as of yet in your first few months. If you are going full, full-time, you know, already going hard to acquire contract, uh, commercial contracts, then $65,000 would be good. Um, or even if you are your second year, but brand spanking new, a realistic goal would be anywhere from 2500 25000 to 35000 moving on to your you know second year uh, anywhere from 35000 to 70000 okay so and depending on how often you put in the work for your business okay don't be alarmed if you're starting with 25000 that is okay don't don't be pressured to you know start all the way to the six figure mark so that's where you get the goal. You're just going to plug it out there. If you already had your first year, then you can, you know, gild yourself for a 15% uh, increase on what you made last year and you put that in and then it'll automatically populate by dividing all 12. Um, some of you, if you are been in the business for over a year, two years, you will know that all months are not always equal. Then you can always adjust this, um, taking out the formula and putting in your own um, division of your yearly goal and what that may look like for you, depending on your previous year. But if you're brand spanking new, just you use the formula as it divided by 12. So that is where you get this monthly goal. It is your, your projected goal by you setting it. Your net income is essentially minusing your profit first, your taxes, employee pay gross, and your giving. Your employee, employee great pay gross is optional if you are doing cleaning by yourself, um, then this is not necessary, okay? So therefore your net income will then just be your profit first, your taxes, and your giving. Um, and if you wanted to, it could be expenses. But again, I'm, I'm explaining how what works for me. I don't take out my, um, I, my net income doesn't include my expenses. So again, what, where am I getting these numbers? I'm minusing from my goal, what my, what I will net get by minusing first these four categories. Where did I get these numbers from? Again, profit first. So what profit first, essentially the book talks about is the misconception of what we consider as profit. Yes, when you bid or when you quote a, a client, you want to increase your labor by a certain percentage to get a profit, quote unquote profit. What you will see very, very quick in your business is that what you're doing is you're reinventing that, reinvesting that profit back into your business, into your expenses and things of that nature. So what profit first highlights is that by the end of the year, when you go through your bookings and you see how much you made in the year, you most often than not, businesses are in the negatives. So therefore, they did not make a profit in that year. You may have made a profit in the month. You may have made a profit within your, your one client, but you probably had to reinvest it. Therefore, you did not make a profit. So what it does is suggest, just like what you may have heard with personal finances, is to pay yourself first. You say with this concept, pay your business first, give yourself your business 10% or 5%, whatever that may look like to you so that you do see an actual profit at the end of the year because you are putting that away. You can even consider this as savings. So that's where I, I do my business. And then I have giving. 
Again, you may have heard this before. It is essential for even your personal spiritual well-being to be a giver. And all businesses, not only is it a tax benefit to be giving to a an actual registered uh, charity uh, or or church, it's good for you personally, but it's also good for your tax wise. So also the book does suggest that you are giving 10%. The book is obviously documented multi-billionaire companies and what they do, you know, successful companies do, and uh, there is a portion for giving. Um, then this is the category for employee pay. Again, if you're by yourself, you may not new, um, be needing this. If you do or have, you know, one other person, you do actually pay them. Then I, for me, my soft spot is 20% because I do some of my cleaning still, 20%, 20 to 30% is what you may be looking, that you are looking to be paying essentially your employees, okay? How do I get that number? Really, I go back to my, a, fa- a few of my last uh, few cleans, see how much I've been paying my clients, roughly what is the percentage of what I've been paying them, and overall it's roughly 20%. That obviously will may increase or would decrease depending on if you have employees or how much employees you may have. So that is just a rough estimate. This is just for rough estimate purposes. This this file is not specifically for tracking your employee pays. It's really tracking your expenses and your client um, um, actual accounts. Okay. So this is like, you know, I'm just using a, a number of 20% to kind of somewhat give me an estimate of what my income is actually looking like uh, without um, with taking out the employee pay. So then you obviously have your taxes depending on where you are in your business. You want to be putting aside anywhere from 15 to 20% and that looks higher depending on how more you make. I would assume if you are looking to take away 30%, um, a sales tracker like this is definitely below what you need to be doing. If you're making that much money to be paying 30% of your income, you should be using a well more advanced uh, system. But for those who are just starting out, 15 to 20% is a good um, way. Um, check with your accountant, check with your city, what that would look like uh, for taxes being a entrepreneur or business owner. So that is 15%. Okay, again, Profit First does break down great suggestions for these percentage in the book, depending on where you're making. I'm giving you the best for those who are just starting out to the first four years like myself. All right. So, and then um, I have expenses here and pay that is calculated differently. So I'm not speaking about that right now. So once I have my yearly, I then take out my profit it's 10%. So I took out 6,500 from the 65,000. I took out another 6,500. I took out 1,300 and I took out 9,750. That's where I got my net income. So I want to know how much money I am making or how much money my business has after I pay my employees, after I gave, after I put profit in my savings and after I essentially pay off my taxes. So I'll have a good idea of what I'll be getting, what that looks like in the month. Therefore, from that, that's where I feel then comfortable to take out my expenses and pay myself. The reality is when you are in your first five years of your business, you should not be paying yourself no ball, big balling um, out, um, money or else you want to, unless you want to be, you know, in debt or again, by an anomaly, there are not, there are people that make substantial money in their first few years. Okay, but again, I've studied multiple books, studying millionaires and billionaires, and majority of the time, their first few years, they're paying little to none until it pays off later in their business. Okay, so um, what makes us study different? So when I have the net income, I now give myself a, a percentage of what my expenses may look like. Again, the book does give you great suggestions where I am in my business. This can be anywhere from 20 to 30%. Next year, I'm looking to do 20% and pay myself a little bit more. 
or you again in your first year, you may want to be reinvesting a lot more, reinvesting about you know 30 percent, giving yourself 30 percent instead of 45 percent. Again, I suggest to read the book, it does give different percentage, this was works for me. Okay, so after I I take away the 20% of expenses from the 29,000, I get this. And then what's the remainder is $23,000 to pay myself. That is, you know, some of your cleaners are making more than that. Okay, and that, and that depends on if you're by yourself, right? You would have more money to work with if you're by yourself. And then you would also, uh, you have the option of, especially if you're by yourself, you wouldn't have this 20%, you could all, you can um, increase your expenses about 35% and then divide the rest between your, your profit and your giving, right? And it all looks different when you're different areas of your business. Where I am right now, and especially just considering if you are looking to, uh, to hire, like these are numbers that you may be looking at, you want for me, I'm thinking I need to pay my employees first. I need to make them happy or else I do not have a business, right? I'm My goal is to step out of my business if that means I take a, a, um, a pay cut so that my employees are happy, my business grows, and eventually I see that profit growing, then that's by all means. And then again, your numbers may be different. Maybe you don't need in your first year to be giving yourself 10% profit. Maybe you're okay with seeing 3% or 5%. And then again, that will help you put more on your expenses and or more to yourself, right? Whatever that looks like to you. Um, but these are percentage that I use for myself, okay? Um, hopefully you understand any questions that we know. I'm going to move on. So now you get to each month what this like look like. Here, I'm going to quickly break this down. This is where I, all those categories where I'm putting the percentage, okay? So like I said, I pay myself 45% of my net income. I pay 10% of my gross income. 10% of my gross income goes to giving, sorry, goes to profit first. 20% of my net income goes to expenses and 20% of my gross income goes to my employees. 15% of my gross income goes to taxes. What is the difference between gross and net income if you do not know? Your gross income is the money that goes into your account without any taxes taking off, right? This is someone pays you 300, your gross income is 300. But after you pay your employees, you pay your taxes, what is your net income? What does your, your business have? Um, and financial uh, lingo, it is essentially your, your gross is what you pay, take away your expenses, which is your net income. Okay. For me, what I'm considering my expenses is my employees. Okay. That's an expense to me. Um, I've also taken off my giving my profit. I just want it like that is, that is important to me that I put it as a quote unquote expense. Okay. You don't really need to know all of that. You could talk with your accountant and figure out what your bookkeeping is. Again, this is what works for me and I highly suggest to help with the principles and longevity of your business. So that's that. And you will always, you could just always double tap these numbers and it will highlight. I don't want this to be highlighted. So you're not confused. I'm not too sure why it's highlighted. Okay. Well, if you highlight these numbers, it's going to highlight where the numbers are coming from. And, and what it's minusing. So your N N9 here, go down across is the net income and it's times the 0, 021, which is the number in this box here. So um, you'll know that this number 90 is coming from the net income after you've um, uh, you've done all this stuff here that we're just go through right now. Where do you put... Uh, what do you put here? You will manually put your monthly goal again where you find it. It's here from your gross. This is technically your gross. This is what your gross you are projected to grossly make in your business. I should actually get what gross means. <laughs> G R O S S, uh, what it actually means, but 
uh, for the sake of time. That's it's gross. Um, that's where you get that, that number. You can plug that in manually for each month. And then obviously, okay, well, I'm just going to go into this so this all makes sense to you. So what you'll do is you'll uh, click this arrow here. You'll drop box all the clients that are here, okay? So whether you have a one-time clean or your routine cleans, you're going to put that here so that you're tracking all the clients you have in the year, essentially. Um, and then if you want to, if you need to increase, you'll just go ahead and insert a row below. And if you need more space for your clients, okay? So uh, let's see here. I have a Dropbox Rachel. These are obviously not real numbers or people. Uh, the service, I do a basic clean for her. And I do this basic clean um, at, this, at this month. It was January 1st. For whatever reason, if you do want to track that, maybe um, you know certain circumstances come up and they want to know when's the last time you were there, whatever. Just check the date on what that clean was. Um, how often do you go? You go once a month and then what, how much do you quote her as? This is the quote that she's agreed, that you both agreed, that you've given to her, that you guys finalized. Okay, so every month you know that she's paying um, two, $235. let us say, and then this, in my, where I am from, I don't need an HST number unless I'm making $30,000 um, in two quarters. So I, while I made this, there was no need for me to also put my taxes right? So if you have to put your HST, you have the option to put the before tax or the after tax. Either way, um, your, your, your thing here will, you know, put that, that number here. Okay. So you have the option. As of right now, this is me putting in not having to put tax. So therefore I have to manually know what I need to pay the government. If you already know that, it's up to you. You don't need to put that. Um, and if you do, you at least you know what that exact number is here anyways. So I would go ahead and put in what uh, she's quoted, what uh, she's expected to pay every month. Then how much hours does it usually take? This, I'm speaking according to, you should watch my videos, this is a routine client that knows that they're getting a basic clean monthly. Maybe she does want a deep clean every so often, but this is the reason why you want to have a very professional contract, a very professional agreement, because you cannot track this accurately as, as much as possible. If you have a client that tells you every single time you come there to do something different, uh, and you cannot track roughly how much you're going to make in the month. So you kind of gauge what that looks like. Keep track of your finances. So you want to be aware of these things and put professional boundaries in place, putting what your estimate hours are. So you kind of know what that looks like for the month. Let's get right into it. Uh, 2.5 hours is how much it takes to clean this house with two people. If you're by yourself, maybe it takes five hours to clean this house, or whatever that looks like. This this is what helped me kind of guesstimate what I will be getting for the month after I pay my employees. That's something that I just wanted to know. You do not have to have this in your in your numbers. You can you know delete this column or you replace it with something else, right? So. I know if I am also cleaning with this person and takes two and a half hours, I don't have to pay myself. I already know how I pay myself. So I need to times this number by the hourly rate that I give my employees, which is $18 an hour. 2.5 times 18 is, um, make sure I have that, is uh, $45. So, 235 take away 45 dollars is 190 right. and then as i what i would do usually do or suggest to do like this wouldn't be what i would do is that at the beginning of the month i will fill out my reoccurring clients that i know i'm gonna get and i'll fill out up to here because i know i know that 
we've already agreed that this is how much they're going to pay. This is usually how it, how long it takes. Um, if I have an employer or not, how many employees do I send out? Um, and what that would look like so that I would know at the beginning of the month, roughly, this is obviously not included. If you have people call you throughout the month and do one-time cleans or even new clients, obviously the beginning of the month, I would roughly know how much I'm going to make in that month, how much I'm, I'm paying my employees, um, and what that would look like after I pay my employees, I should say. So as your clients pay you, I suggest every week you should have like some kind of financial day where you update this tracker. So every week you will know how close you are to your monthly goals, how much you're making, how much you have to pay or how much you don't have to pay your employees. Okay. So, um, every week you will then update what this looked like. So how much did your, did Rachel actually pay you? Maybe Rachel or your one time clean tipped you. You have the option to now say if she tipped you $10, you will now put that it was Two forty-five. If she tipped you cash, we all know that you don't have to track. This is not trackable. Then you don't have to put the ten dollars. If they tipped you via credit card or via e-transfer, then you would most likely want to put that. And then you have the option. Let's say if it was ten dollars tip. If you do have an employee, you would give them half of it. So then technically, you have a five dollar tip. You could just track the five dollars. So that is 240, right? Because you would have already given the $45 to your employee and the $5 tip. So what is actually trackable, again, I'm speaking of this was not cash, is 240. Well, technically it is 245 if you do not have payroll and you cannot distinguish tip or pay because technically this came into your bank account and the government doesn't care if you had to quote unquote pay somebody um, unless you have obviously independent contractor information and you can confidently speak on that you paid that person the $5, okay? But technically you did see the, the 245 coming into your bank account, okay? But the sake of your own personal records, just do 240 because you'll figure that with your accountant, okay? Again, I'm not an accountant. This is all what I've learned personally, and um, what I what I do to kind of tr kind of guesstimate track what my months will look like. So that's how I would get gross after my tip, and then what does the net? Ooh. Oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. She yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. So, uh -huh. trying to think of an example. Yeah. So, if she paid with the two forty tip because it was tracked, that's what you get. So, after paying the tip, yes, after paying the tip and your play pay, so you take the two forty five takeaway. 45 for the two and a half hours, take away $5 from the tip. You are paying yourself or the business $195. All right. So that's where you get your numbers. Here, it's going to automatically accumulate. Obviously, as you put in more information, you're going to have this number increase but like you see here what was the gross income this is how much you were paid in your bank account it's up to you if you want to include the cash i would highlight it to make sure that you know what was cash and what was not um if you just want to see overall what your business is making you obviously don't show this to the government so if you were tracking your cash for your own personal reason that's fine um so that yours grows and then your net would be after this is how I track it. This was, was easy for me. I only this this net income reflects only taking off my employee pay. So this is my what my business is getting. Pro I probably shouldn't call it net income because technically it's not net income. I could just put income 
like that's how much income my business is getting because this is not yet taking away all these other things yet. It would reflect at the end of the month and you would input them manually here. All right. So that is the income in the business. And obviously what this number is, is your monthly goal minus the gross income. So how much you just got into your business, um, all this. Because your gross would, would when people say I made $40,000 in my cleaning business, they're including all the money that came into the business. They're, they didn't minus their taxes. They didn't minus their employee um, pay. They didn't minus their expenses like you know that's that's reality you know a lot of people think that you make six figures that you're making you, know, you as a person making six figures you know your business made six figures um but doesn't include all the other expenses that has to be taken out right so that is what this number reflects here monthly how close you are to your monthly gross income goals right and then going down here to now explain what these numbers are minusing. I believe I just spoke about that. I kind of broke it down. But now that you see the numbers here, as you add, obviously this would be bigger and be more. But the salary, if I double click it, the salary is 40% out of my net income. So after I've paid my employees, right? So this is how much that client paid me. I've already paid my employees. This is how much my business got. This is how much of the nine one ninety five I would technically be paying myself. Um, how much of the giving? The giving is coming straight from the income gross. So I, right off the bat, I take away ten percent to give before taxes. That is my preference. You have the option to change this and give after your income. Like you could do that after your taxes. That's up to you, right? Like this, this, this is something I do personally. I give before my taxes. Uh, profit first, I take before I pay my plate. The same time I pay my plate, my employees, I Put away my profits my expenses is the income that i get my employee percentage 20 percent of my gross income and this is this is not no like hard and done number this is just a guesstimated number again if you're by yourself this doesn't need to be done or maybe you are fully hands off and this number has to be more right this just makes sense because like i said if i if i was cleaning with this person uh 20 percent was 49 dollars of 245 which is very much accurate somewhat because i paid them 45 dollars and then um they got five dollar tip which i don't include anyways like you know so it, this is like a good estimated number. Obviously, that's different because they're also whether you have workers comp and all that stuff. I currently do not have workers comp. So what this would be really guesstimating is um, the taxes like they pay for. But like where I'm from, I have to match um, employment, EI, right? So this will look a little bit different. So I can change this to 25 but I'm pretty good with that. And then your taxes is 15%, which is from obviously the gross income. So again, this is like a flash look of what essentially you will be paying and what areas of, of your business. This is all suggested by Profit First, where I get most of my numbers from. Um, you can definitely play with it, whether you want to give less, whether you want to give yourself less, whether you want to have more for expenses, where you want to pay yourself less or more. Um, the max that I've seen suggested is pay yourself 50% because you still have to run a business. I put 45. Um, I actually don't even mind doing 40. 
you know, even looking to this, I can, I can give myself a little bit more on my expenses if need be, especially when it comes to giving myself a marketing budget. And this may look different for every business. So essentially this is all the same throughout. You're going to put in the monthly goal and then put in your employee, sorry, your, your client information and how much they pay. So I let me know if you have any questions, clarity, just timestamp where your question is so I can further explain it. And then let me know if there's anything that should be added. Um, if you need clarity, the book that really inspired this sheet is called Profit First to bring great principle, financial principles in business, in your growth of your business. And I wish you all the best in your growth and using this this um, form to help you grow. And just know that you can change these colors. Again, I worked with a, by just clicking that and changing the colors there. I worked with a an Excel professional, Google Sheet professional to kind of revamp this. This is the best I've ever seen this. <laughs> this is like, this is an improvement for me myself. So I'm also getting a hang of this format, but this is essentially what I've been using for the last four years of my business to keep track of everything. Again, numbers percentage may change as the business grew. Um, obviously, I didn't start with employees, so I didn't have to do the 20% to put aside. Um, and, and yeah, so thank you so much for purchasing this uh, form and be sure to, or tracker, to ask questions and communicate and just let me know how you like it, enjoyed it in the Facebook group. Thank you so much.